In this video, we're going to go through some more conceptual questions related to Newton's laws of motion. What I suggest you do is pause the video after I read the question and really think about it yourself first before you restart the video to see if you got it right or not. Our first question, an object is moving with a constant velocity. Which statement must be true? Go ahead and pause the video and figure out your answer. Okay, so in many physics problems there's a key word or phrase that you want to focus on. In this case, it's the phrase of constant velocity. If the velocity is constant, that tells us that the acceleration is zero. Well, if the acceleration is zero, what does that tell us? We know that Newton's second law says that the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass. And therefore, if the acceleration is zero, the net force has to be zero. So A is the correct answer. Um, B is definitely not correct. We know that an object will continue with a constant velocity when there's a net force of zero on it. C could be true, um, but realistically, you never find an object that has no forces acting on it uh, because you'd have to be infinitely far away from every object in the universe to have that be true. And D could be true. In other words, we could have a situation like an object on a flat surface. Um, let's say it was being dragged at a constant velocity. So we would have an applied force, a force of kinetic friction, the normal force, and the force of gravity. Well, in that case, there would be an even number of forces acting on it. But I could just as easily have a situation where there's not an even number of forces, and yet they still add up to zero. Let's try this one. If you were to move into outer space far from the Earth, which of these would be true? Go ahead and pause the video and determine your answer. Okay, well hopefully you got this one right. The answer is C. Your weight would change, but your mass would not change. Remember that when you hear the term weight, that's really simply a shorthand for the force of gravity. And so the force of gravity is diff definitely different depending on where you are in the solar system or the universe for that matter. On the surface of the Earth, we know that we can calculate the force of gravity by just taking the mass and multiplying by the acceleration due to gravity. But more generally, um, the force of gravity is calculated by using what's called Newton's universal law of gravitation. We're going to learn about that in a later video, but at this point you should know that the force of gravity will change depending on where the object is. The mass, however, doesn't change because remember that mass is simply a measure of the amount of stuff in an object, literally the number and type of atoms that make up the object. Well, that's not going to change as you move it around. Let's take a look at this one. An object is moving to the right in a straight line. The net force acting on the object is always directed to the right, but the magnitude of the force is decreasing with time. The object will. Go ahead and pause the video and think about your answer. Okay, this is one that usually the majority of students get wrong when I ask it in a classroom setting. To help you figure out whether you got the right answer or not, Let's go ahead and draw some graphs. So the first graph that I'm going to draw is a graph of the net force versus time. What we're told in the problem is that the net force is always to the right, so it's always positive, and the magnitude is decreasing over time. Therefore, a graph for the net force might look something like that. It's decreasing, but it's always positive. The next thing we want to think about is what does that mean about the acceleration? Of course, we know that the acceleration is equal to the net force over the mass. And therefore, 
since all we're doing to the net force is dividing by a constant, the graph of the acceleration versus time is going to look essentially the same. Now, we're told that the object is moving to the right. So I know initially, if it's moving to the right, that means it's got to have some positive velocity. So I'll just say it starts off, well, let, let me tell you what I'm graphing. I'm graphing velocity versus time. So it definitely starts off with some positive velocity. But now, notice the object is accelerating. Remember that the acceleration is the slope of the velocity versus time graph, and we're starting out with the highest value for a. So the slope of v versus t should be pretty high initially. But notice that the slope of v versus t, it's always positive, but it's decreasing over time. And so the velocity versus time graph would look like that. You'll notice that the slope at different points, it's always positive, but it's decreasing over time, and that would give us that acceleration versus time graph. Once we've figured out that that's what's going on, now picking the right answer is not so hard. So stop and begin moving to the left. <clears throat> no, we know it's always moving to the right. Continue moving to the right with the speed decreasing. Nope, because we notice the speed is always increasing. Continue moving to the right with constant speed. Nope. And so we can see that the answer has to be continue moving to the right with speed increasing with time. One of the things that makes this kind of a difficult concept is that all, although the velocity is always increasing with time, the rate of the increase is decreasing. Well, the rate at which the velocity changes is the acceleration. Let's try this one. A person gives a shopping cart an initial push to get it moving and then lets go. The cart travels forward along the floor, gradually slowing down as it moves. Which of the following is true while the cart is slowing down? So, I'm going to just draw a picture. Here's my person. They've pushed the cart, but the problem is asking about what is going on once the cart has left the person's hands and is slowing down. Go ahead, pause the video, and come up with your answer. OK, here's how I'm going to approach the problem. I'm going to draw the free body diagram for the cart. And we see here we've got the usual forces, the normal force and the force of gravity acting on the cart. We also have a force of friction, and it's kinetic friction as the object is rolling along. The next question is, is there a force in, in the forward direction? Well, there is a velocity in the forward direction, but there is no force. Once the cart leaves the person's hands, there is not a force in the direction of motion. That's the most common mistake students make, is they like to put a force in the direction of motion. Velocity and force are not the same thing. So only a net backward force is going to be acting. There is no forward force. A block rests on a table. A horizontal force of 5 newtons is applied to the block. The block does not move. The magnitude of the force of friction acting on the block is. Go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so let's draw it out. We've got a block. We are applying a horizontal force of 5 newtons. And we're told that the block doesn't move. So what does that tell us? Well, if it doesn't move, it's definitely not accelerating. And if it's not accelerating, we know from Newton's second law that the net force has to be zero. Now, 
if we draw the free body diagram, we see that we've got four forces acting, the normal force and mg, and we know those are going to cancel each other out. We've got the applied force to the right, and we've got the force of friction to the left. And I should actually have Fs there for static friction. So if the object isn't moving, then definitely the net force in the x direction has to equal zero. And therefore, Fa minus Fs equals zero, or the applied force is equal to the force of static friction in magnitude. It must be exactly five newtons. If you selected any of the other answers, then there would be a net force and the object would accelerate. A non-zero net force acts on an object. Does that mean the object moves in the same direction as the net force? Go ahead, pause this and think about that. Well, the good news is here that you had a 50-50 shot. Turns out the answer is no. It does not have to be in the same direction. So let's think about what does have to be in the same direction. Again, Newton's second law tells us that the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass. Remember, it's a vector equation. So A and F net have to be in the same direction. So it's the acceleration that has to be in the same direction as the net force. However, the velocity does not have to be in the same direction as the net force. Think of a couple examples. An object is moving to the right with some initial velocity and the only force acting is friction. The net force there would be to the left. We'd have a negative acceleration, the object would slow down. Another example, uniform circular motion. At any point, as that object is going around in the circle, the velocity is perpendicular to the net force. Remember the net force and the acceleration have to be towards the center of the circle. A ball of mass M is suspended by a string from the ceiling inside an elevator. If the elevator is moving upward with a constant speed, the tension in the string is what? Go ahead, pause the video. So the correct answer is equal to mg. Let's work this out. First of all, here is our elevator. And we've got a ball of mass m suspended from the elevator. What's the key word in the question or key phrase? Well, the answer is constant speed. So we know the acceleration in the y direction is 0. Well, what forces are acting on M? There are only two forces that can act on that mass. The tension, acting up, and the force of gravity, acting down. And so if we write down Newton's second law in the Y direction, we see that the left-hand side becomes FT minus MG. The right-hand side is zero because we're told it's moving with a constant speed. And therefore, the tension is equal to mg. Notice if it either had, had a positive or a negative acceleration, then the tension would not have been equal to mg. In the figure, the tension in the string is greater than, less than, or equal to the weight of block B. Now, to actually be able to answer this question, I have to tell you whether there's friction in the problem. And I would like you to answer it with no friction. So we've got a frictionless table. Go ahead and pause the video and think about it and come up with your answer. The most common mistake that students make in this problem is to say the answer is B equal to. But in fact, the correct answer is less than. Okay, so the tension in the string has to be less than the weight of block B. Let's see how we know that. 
The first thing we want to do is draw out the free body diagram for each of our objects. For object A, the free body diagram would only have three forces. The normal force, MAG, and the tension, FT. Notice that there's no friction, so there's no force in that direction. For object B, we've got the tension up and MBG down. So here's what we have to realize. Block A has to move because there is definitely a net force on block A no matter what you do because there is no frictional force. Therefore, the objects are going to accelerate. Well, if they're going to accelerate, these forces can't be equal. And in fact, we know the objects are going to accelerate in that direction. So FBG has to be greater than the tension, or the way the question asked it, the tension in the rope has to be less than the weight MBG. Last question. Block A and block B each have a mass of five kilograms. What is the tension in the string? Go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so hopefully the first thing that you did was you quickly ruled out A and B. Because if we're asking for a tension, we know that tension is a force, and we know the unit of force is the Newton. Right away, therefore, we can get rid of half of our answers. The next thing that we have to look at is what are the masses of A and B? Is this system going to accelerate or not? When we see that the masses are equal, we know that the system is not going to accelerate. And now we can just look at either one of the two objects. Let's draw the free body diagram for object A. We've got the tension acting up. We've got MAG acting down. Well, we know that the net force is equal to MAY. And we know that the acceleration is equal to zero because the two masses balance each other out. So we have FT minus MAG is equal to zero, or the tension is equal to MAG. And therefore, because it's five kilograms, five times 9.8 is 49 Newtons. And of course, we could have looked at this just with object B, and we would have come out with the same result.